gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. It's a Sunday, I don't tend to do videos on a Sunday very often. Occasionally I'll think, eh, maybe I'll put something out, but usually this is the day where I chill out and don't spend hours and hours and hours in front of Adobe Premiere. However, what I would like to do, just to keep things ticking over, is use this video as a chance to talk about some of the stuff that's going to be happening post-Cataclysm and over the next few months. It's kind of like a battle plan for the next six months to a year's worth of content. A lot of people have been asking what exactly I plan on doing after the Cataclysm beta ends, and since the projected launch date right now, I believe, is the 7th of December, We've still got quite a bit of time before the beta is over, so there's going to be a lot more videos coming in that regard. But, I'd like to talk to you about the stuff I'm going to be doing over the course of the next six months. So, if you're not interested in announcement videos and boring toffery, I would strongly suggest that you switch off, because that's all this video is. You have been warned. No, really, go away. Doors to your left. Okay, first things first, what's going to be happening with World of Warcraft productions after Cataclysm launches? Right, well, I've got three series in the pipeline that are going to be running on a regular basis. The first of them is going to be called Azeroth Daily. Yeah, I couldn't come up with anything flashier. It's going to be daily news, hints, rants, videos of particularly annoying quests, money-making tips, daily quests, and a lot of other nonsense that I can just sort of jam in there. And it's going to also have a regular Q&A on a daily basis. So you're going to be able to leave questions if you need advice, if you need help with something. I'll pick some of them every day and I'll answer them at the end of each show. That's probably going to be Monday through Saturday, I would think. I'm going to be frapsing basically everything I do in WoW. Everything including just normal questing, dailies, whatever. I'm just going to leave fraps running. I need a couple more hard drives for that, but yeah, that's in the works. And I'll be compiling the best stuff together into a, a daily video, which should hopefully be interesting to you guys as well as helpful. And it's going to be, I would hope, your one-stop shop for news as well. I'm going to take news from all around the place, all of the new stuff that comes out, stuff like things off MMO Champion, off the Blizzard front page... Any issues that are hitting the forums and things like that, they're going to be addressed in brief. It's not going to be anything particularly in-depth. If you want that, well, you need to listen to my podcast, really. But it's going to keep you up to date on the goings-on as well as hopefully help you out and entertain you. So I'm hoping that will become part of your daily schedule just as the videos right now have with the Cataclysm Beta. That's not all, however. I'm primarily a raider, as a lot of you should know by now, which means that I'm going to have two raid-based series. The first of these is something that's proved extremely popular so far. One of the Wipeathon 3000 videos has got about half a million views, so I imagine that people do want to watch it. So yes, it is going to be Wipeathon 3000. That's going to become a regular thing for raid encounters, and what it's going to do is it's going to show you the learning process of raiding. And obviously with trollface.jpg, which I'll be talking about in just a moment, we'll be doing an awful lot of raiding, so I'm going to fraps all of it. I will put videos together on a boss-by-boss -boss basis. I think it's a good way to learn the strategy. I think there is a lot of validity in your normal everyday boss guides where it just says, okay, do this, do this, do this. Here's a successful attempt. But I think that there is also legitimacy in teaching people by watching other people screw it up. Showing this gradual progression of wipes from the start where, say, we'll demonstrate the thing which generally catches people out first. So say there's a boss ability that you don't expect and that generally that's the first thing you've got to get a handle on before you can progress through the fight. We'll show you that and then we'll show you how to get a handle on that and then we'll show you the next problem and the next problem working all the way through to a successful kill. And I think that you're going to learn it way better that way than you would by just watching a normal guide. But hey, you know. It's just a choice. Some people are going to learn better that way. Some people will learn better by just soaking in a successful attempt, which is why I'm going to do another kind of series as well, and I'm going to call that Rage Leader. That's going to be a little bit different, and it's going to be a comedic-style raid guide presented from the perspective of a very angry raid leader, which may or may not be based on me. Yeah. So I'll keep maintaining that it's a character, but anyone that's raided with me knows that I can get a little bit passionate, I like to call it, yeah. We'll see how many people actually fall for that. I'm thinking now. But yeah, those are the three general WoW shows that are going to be part of my channel. And you are going to be seeing those on a daily basis. As to how many, well, it really depends. You know, you might get an Azeroth Daily and a Wipathon 3000. One day, you might get an Azeroth Daily and a Rage Leader. The next, you might get all three one day. It just depends. But there will be a piece of WoW content on my channel at least six days a week. I don't tend to work on a Sunday. It's just... Not the way I roll. It's nice to have a break every now and again, as I'm sure all of you are well aware. Okay, what about StarCraft 2? Well, I suck at StarCraft 2 will be happening whenever I feel like doing it. It's not a regular series per se. 
I don't get a lot of time to play StarCraft 2 at the moment, mostly because of the beta, but I imagine that's going to change as the beta ends and we go into more regular WoW playing. I think that'll be part of my daily schedule. I'll play a few games, maybe try and release a couple of these videos a week, just demonstrating, hey, look, here's a game, here's how I screwed it up, or here's how my opponent screwed it up, and here's how you can avoid it. Now, Shoutcraft. A lot of people have been asking about Shoutcraft. That was my big esports series that I did during the StarCraft 2 beta, and that is going to be continuing. That is going to be coming back around mid-October-ish. It's reliant on one thing, and that's the connection of a bonded ADSL connection. I'm in a pretty terrible area when it comes to internet. I'm four and a half miles away from my exchange. I'm in a non-fiber, non-cable zone, which means that my speed is very much limited. However, I'm getting a bonded connection, which is two ADSL lines bonded together via a double WAN router. It's going to be pretty good, and it should provide me with about 2.5 meg up. Now, that's going to benefit everything, because that means I can upload faster. And it may mean that some of the stuff also goes up in 1080p as a result of that. But we're going to have to see. I'm not going to promise 1080p, especially because 1080p on YouTube actually looks terrible. I don't know if you've actually seen it on a proper monitor, but the bitrate that they use for the codec is way too low in comparison to the bitrate they use for everything else. So 1080p footage is generally a waste of time. Plus, most people can't view it anyway because their monitors don't support that res. Whatever the case... I'm going to be going back onto the Shoutcraft thing, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do two live shows a week, which is Shoutcraft US and Shoutcraft EU. And those shows are going to consist of games ranging from sort of mid-level diamond all the way up to the pro stuff. It's also going to consist of tournament coverage, and it's going to consist of show matches. I already have one lined up between Randy and Pureball, who are two of the best UK players. There's money on the line for that one. That's going to be a best of seven series sponsored by Aqua Tuning, and there's going to be a lot more of that kind of thing happening. And how am I going to present this on my YouTube channel, you might ask, because loads of you aren't going to watch that live, I imagine. What's going to happen is that I'm going to take the file, and I'm going to then split it on a match-by-match -match basis. And those matches are going up on YouTube. Because I've got 2.5 meg up, I can stream in about 2 meg with good audio quality. Now, with the VP6 codec, I can basically make that look like my 720p videos on YouTube. So I capture 4 hours of footage, which might be between, say, 10 to 15 matches. I then slice those matches up, and those matches go up in full, I might add. I'm not splitting matches down the middle. That's not going to happen. They'll be going up in full on my channel. The great thing about that is that there's not an awful lot of extra work involved with that, so it won't disrupt my WoW stuff, and it won't disrupt my general gaming stuff. The whole point is to give you more content and fit it into my schedule so that I can produce it on a regular basis, and I don't end up disappointing you guys. If you want to have a look at my old Shoutcraft stuff, feel free, although what I will say is that a lot of that was actually done to replays, and it wasn't done in front of an audience. I really like doing stuff live in front of an audience. I tend to screw it up way too much if I'm just doing it pre-recorded, and I don't have anyone there to shout at me or whatever. As regards to tournament coverage, I'm going to be at the i41, so there'll be stuff from the i series there. I am possibly going to Dreamhack, maybe. As to whether or not I'll be commentating, I don't know, but I might just be going there anyway just to hobnob and make connections and hopefully get some gaming in. That would be great, wouldn't it? We'll see how that one goes. But hopefully, if I do get to Dreamhack, I will announce prior to the time, and if any of you Swedes want to meet up, then by all means. I know Sweden is my third biggest demographic at the moment, so big shout-out to the Swedes, and I look forward to seeing you there. Now, what about general gaming stuff? I've got three series in the pipeline. One of these is going to be regular, and it's called WTF is whatever. You've seen it before. I've done it once with the TF2 update. I also did it with Ruse. I've got stuff coming up for Dead Rising 2, as well as a couple of other things. WTF is, the whole point of that is just, I play game. I talk about it. Simple as that. It's not review content. It's not preview content. It's... Not even technically first impressions content, it's just a, hey, this is what this game plays like. These are the problems, and hopefully it's either entertaining or informative to you. I'm not going to pretend to be a proper reviewer, I'm not very good at that, you know. There are people who are actually professionals at that, I would recommend you pay attention to them. But it's a piece of content I can put out, and I can keep you abreast of the latest games, some of which you might not have heard of before. So hopefully that will be useful to you. The Ruse one was very popular and the TF2 one's not doing too badly either, so I think that's definitely a format that some people do enjoy. Now, I do have an irregular series idea called Everything's an Esport, and I've wanted to do this for ages. The whole problem I've got with esports is that it's so restrictive. There's very few games that are actually taken seriously as an esport, and I just think commentated competitive gaming could be really entertaining. So what I want to do with Everything's an Esport is actually take games that 
weren't necessarily considered to be competitive or esporty in any way, shape, or form. Like, for instance, my first episode might end up being something like Sacrifice. I'll get some of the game station guys to play a game of Sacrifice, and I will spectate and I'll commentate. And there we go. We've got some Sacrifice esports going on right there. Some of it might even be games that you wouldn't expect. Something like, say, Gratuitous Space Battles. Now, I think that would be great as, like, a game show, a future game show where... Fleets of ships are killing the crap out of each other. I would watch that. Hell yeah. So I think that's a nice flexible concept that'll work and that'll hopefully entertain a lot of people, even if it is a little bit weird at times. You know, I'd actually like to do that. I'd like to commentate something that just, you know, you turn around and say, what? <laughs> Why are you doing this? Why would you turn this into an eSport? That's ridiculous. That sounds fun to me, honestly. It's all that really matters, making fun videos. Okay, what else do I have? Well... Interviews would be something that I'll be focusing on quite a bit. I've had two pretty successful interviews so far. The Witcher got about 200,000 views. Torchlight was something like 120, 130,000. That's it's not bad. Those companies were very happy indeed. <laughs> Let me put it that way. And I've got a lot more companies lined up. I finished an interview with the guys at Arrowhead Studios about their forthcoming game, Magicka. That's going to be good because I have exclusive footage to show you from that. Not only do I have footage to go in the back of the interview, I've actually got footage that I could either commentate or just simply put up there that nobody else has seen before. They actually went into the pre-alpha, fraps an hour of it, then handed it over to me. And then I pointed out to them, uh, guys, this is 40 or 50 gigabytes. I'm not in Sweden. <laughs> so it's taking a while to download, let me put it that way. But I think that you guys will really dig that. That game looks hilarious. So yeah, lots of interviews coming up as well. And for the Game Station content, my regular series is This Is Why We Can't Have Nice Things. And you've seen the pilot of that. That's going to be a collab piece with various members of the Game Station about games that just didn't do as well as they deserved. The second one that I've got coming up, that's in the pipeline. Bear in mind, everything is subject to change because there could be all manner of problems that hit us in the production process of these videos. These are older games and often we have massive compatibility problems and things. So it does take a little bit of work. The second one is supposedly going to be Metal Fatigue with the one and only Husky Starcraft. So if you are into RTS and you want to see an RTS that is not very well known but had some amazingly innovative features for the time then you're going to be wanting to check that one out the release schedule for nice things is about every wednesday or thursday give or take so we're looking for one a week as to what's coming up after that while well, i'm looking at a video about metal storm which was a rare nes game an extremely hard one indeed and i'm going to be co-reviewing that with k-wing and I'm also going to be doing a Planescape Torment video in a few weeks' time, and that's most likely going to be with my wife, because she's beaten that game about three or four times, and could be considered to be an expert in the field. That reminds me, I really do need to actually beat it once, don't I? Yeah, I'll have to work on that over the next few weeks. Right, so that covers the content that you can expect over the next six months to a year on this channel, assuming I am still around at that point. Obviously, my priority is to try and keep you people entertained. And I know I'm probably going to lose a lot of views when the Cataclysm beta ends. I totally accept that, which is why I'm trying to plan ahead and make sure that there's lots of cool, entertaining content on this channel for you. However, there's one last thing I would like to discuss, and that is Trollface.jpg. There have been a lot of requests to know about Trollface, about how to get into Trollface, about applying to Trollface. So here are the basic facts about Trollface.jpg. It is on Horde side, Anchorage, European server. That's where it is. It is going to start just before Cataclysm. So likely we will kick it off mid-November and just sort of get things sorted out, get things organized, and probably farm for some badges and things like that because you can convert some of the stuff over. That might be kind of handy for people to do. Now, what is the format of the guild? Well, one, it's an all troll guild, which means there are no paladins allowed. Trolls can roll every other class, so any troll is welcome, regardless of level. This is going to be a large guild, and that's going to put a lot of people off, but let me explain exactly how I'm going to do the format. Everyone is welcome, as long as you're not an arsehole. Yeah? If you act like a dick, then you're getting kicked out. There won't be any warnings, there'll be a set of rules in place, and just say, look, you are being a knobend, get out of the freaking guild. There's going to be zero tolerance on that kind of behavior. This is not a fan guild per se i really don't like sycophantic behavior honestly i don't i know a lot of people say that i can't take criticism but at the end of the day that's not true and i actually really despise it when people 
hang on my every word because I'm just another player who happens to have a beta account and a lot of time on his hands. That doesn't make me some kind of demigod, for God's sake. Please don't, please do not behave that way. It's weird. It's okay to be a fan, but it gets to the point of being a little bit creepy sometimes. Whatever the case, it is there to provide a good guild experience for a wide demographic of different kinds of people. That means casual players. If you only play once a week, you're welcome. You are welcome in the guild. You're not going to be kicked out of that, and there are going to be various divisions. So the way I'm going to do it is, right now, my focus is going to be 10-man raiding. I'm not really interested in 25 too much, although that could change before the launch. So I'm probably going to have a 10-man raiding division that I personally lead, and that division is going to have its own... DKP system, or in this case, I'm going to be running with Suicide Kings because I believe that's the best and quickest and easiest to manage system for a 10-man raiding group. It will consist of between 10 to 12 players per se. It'll have a core of 10, and then it'll have two benches, and those benches are most likely going to be more casual players that maybe can't log in for every raid night. As to how many nights I'm going to raid, probably looking at about three, maybe three to four hour raid sessions on those three nights, and that'll be about it. Here's the thing, though. Trollface.jpg is going to allow you to raid in any way that you choose. So say you're really hardcore, and you, for some reason, want to be involved in this guild. Maybe you're guildless. Maybe your previous guild collapsed or whatever, or you just want to try something new. You can come along to Trollface.jpg, and you can say, right... I am an experienced raider. Here's my resume. Obviously, you do this once you get in the guild. There's not going to be an application process officially. And I want to say, right, well, what do you want to do? Well, I want to set up a 25-man raid division that raids on these nights. And we'll look at our schedule and say, right, well, we've got these divisions already. These are when these guys raid. These are the players we can give you. These are the players we can assign you. And you lead that. And you sort out everything internally. Now... Each of these divisions will be led by a single officer, and that officer will report to a council every week to talk about various things. Say, if we see one raiding group is performing particularly badly, we'll ask them why. If they have attendance problems, then we'll try and resolve them. We'll try and take people from other groups, or we'll try and take people that are unassigned to raid divisions and put them in there. And we'll try and work as a team to make this large guild sort of work together in cells. So the cells can exchange resources, they can exchange information, they can use the same resources like website and ventrilo and forums and things like that. But... Aside from that, they are independent. They can raid whenever they wish, as long as it's regular. They can go do whatever they wish, and that applies to PvPers as well. If we want PvP teams, PvP divisions, fixed battleground teams, go for it. Absolutely. We can set up a division for that. It'll be led by an experienced player. So anything you want to do, really, can be done. You can do everything at Zombo.com and also in trollface.jpg, as long as you are a troll, because, hey, we are a bunch of wow racists. What can I say? Not my fault that I rolled the best race. That's how it's going to work. It's not too complicated, really. It's a way of taking a lot of the responsibility off of me because, really, I do not want to be managing a 500-plus person guild. That is insane. <laughs> so I will be managing a small part of it. I will be part of the council. I'll get the final say and veto on everything. But at the end of the day, you might not even be in my rating division. And you are going to have to accept that because... Uh, we have had problems in guilds before be where people have joined just to raid with me, whatever. I don't know why they'd want to do that, but whatever the case, if you're joining the guild, please don't join it to raid with me. Please join it to be part of a good, good guild experience. And I am going to be honest here. What I want is for people to actually realize how good being in a guild can be. A lot of people have been saying, oh, guilds are elitist, guilds are pointless, guilds are only for raiders. No, they're not. They never have been, they never will be, and certainly in Cataclysm, you don't want to be guildless. You don't. You're going to miss out on so many benefits, whether they be items, whether they be experience boosts, honor point boosts, extra gold, everything. There's so many perks available. You've seen the perks available in my videos, so you're going to want to be part of a guild. You are welcome there regardless of who you are as long as you don't piss people off. If you're a jerk, if you're an asshole, if you start getting people's backs up, then you're out on your ass. I don't care. I can replace you. It's really not a problem. That's reality, folks. If you're offended by that, if you're easily offended, please, please don't join my guild. And I will have an 18 plus rating on the guild it's going to be extremely hard to police but if i do find people who are under the age of 18 causing problems then you're out on your ass it's as simple as that and i'm certainly not going to moderate my behavior for people like that
Right, that's the overview of trollface.jpg, folks. Once it is available for recruitment, I will do an announcement. If you have raid or PvP experience and you wish to lead a division, now's probably a good time to send in an application. Send it to the Murloc at gmail.com. That is the Murloc at gmail.com. I want to know why you are capable of leading a division, why you want to lead a division, what kind of thing you want to do. Maybe you want to do something ridiculous like lead a crafting division, lead a daily questing division, lead just a leveling division, whatever you want. If you want to do that, prove to me that you are good enough to do it and we'll see about putting you in charge of a division and seeing how that actually goes. It sounds like a reasonable concept to me. I think it should work. And the nice thing about it is even if 95% of the guild collapses, I could still raid with 10 people. Yes, I'm selfish. I know. That's the way to do it. Right, folks. That is the rundown. Rather detailed lowdown of what's going to be going on on this channel over the next year or so. If you have any questions, then by all means, you can leave them in the comments section below. I will try to answer as many as possible. If they are dumb, expect to be smacked down. That is just the way that I roll. Can't deal with it. Doors to your left. My name's been Total Biscuit. Thank you if you managed to get to the end of this for paying attention. And I will see you next time.